Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Tonight I have two imaging rigs set up. I have the Ascar 80PHQ inside the observatory and just outside I have the Redcat 51. So join me in this video where hopefully I'll be able to share two deep sky astro images. So I have two imaging rigs set up in the garden tonight. I have this one behind me, which you can see here, the Ascar 80 PHQ, a 600 millimeter triplet refractor paired with the ASI 2600 mono. So let me just really quickly interrupt the video here because during this piece to camera, I was explaining how I was gonna be photographing the Dark Shark Nebula. Well, I still haven't photographed that target, but it is on my list of targets to image. I actually ended up changing my mind last minute and switching targets during this imaging session, which you'll see later on in the video. So keep watching and you'll find out what I actually imaged. And hopefully I can capture a full night's worth of data. Now the moon doesn't come up until about 2.30 um, tonight. So fingers crossed, I should get some nice data to share with you. Now I'm just gonna very quickly take you behind the dome and talk you through my second imaging rig. Okay, so this is my second imaging rig here, um, the Redcat 51 250 millimeter wide field refractor. A telescope I absolutely love, so lightweight, so easy, so reliable, can just simply grab and go. Um, I have it sat on top of the HEQ5 Pro, so really good mount for this sort of size telescope. Um, copes really well with slightly bigger scopes as well, but um, this is what it's sat on tonight. Um, I have it all being controlled by the AI. SI Air Pro, which is the same as what I'm using inside the observatory as well. I have the ASI 2600 mono um, on the back of it with the Antlia SHO three nanometer uh, narrowband filters. Um, so a few people have asked me about this setup, the Redcat 51 with the 2600. How does it work for sampling? Um, how do the stars look? Well, in my opinion, I think the stars look really good from this setup, especially when you drizzle with with, um, your post-processing and with the you know all of the tools such as star reduction the um, blur exterminator tool that you can get from RC Astro um, I think the stars you can make them look really good so I'm really happy with this combination together and that APS-C size sensor with the Redcat 51 just gives you such a wide field um, of view which is absolutely awesome. So the target for tonight is going to be the Jellyfish Nebula and the Monkey Head Nebula. Hopefully I can frame both of them really nicely with this wide field. Um, so those of you who watched my last video will know that I just finished imaging the Monkey Head Nebula at 600 millimeters but going wider I can fit the jellyfish nebula in at uh, in the same image as well so that's the plan red cat 51 is going to be shooting south is going to be on the jellyfish and monkey head that should stay up nice and visible until about 2 30 um, when it sets behind one of the trees that my neighbor has so hopefully the forecasts hold up it's supposed to be clear i can't see a single cloud in the sky at the moment um, but i'll bring you back outside uh, later on when it's dark and i'll show you how i'm getting on Okay, so I've just polar aligned this telescope and I have a slewed to my targets. So now I'm ready to image. And one great thing about having the pod is that that telescope in there is constantly polar aligned. So I don't need to uh, do anything. That one, I just go and connect with the ASI Air, set up the sequence and I'm good to go. So this one, lives inside so I have to carry it out, uh, set it up, polar align it um, every time I'm using it. So it takes a little bit longer but it's not too much of an effort. Um, but one thing I did just want to quickly mention, something I forgot earlier when talking through the rig, is that I would highly recommend the Deep Sky Dad accessory for the EAF um, for the Redcat. So 
This is the Deep Sky Dad autofocuser, so it sits just below the telescope, the EAF sits in there and it connects to the focuser of the Red Cat and I would highly recommend it. It's so useful to automate everything, um, it's so useful to focus when changing filters etc and it's really really reliable, or I found it really reliable so far. So I'll put a link in the description but yeah if you've got a Red Cat I'd highly recommend this product. But anyway that uh, telescope is all connected, this telescope is pointing towards its target so I'm going to go inside in the warm and set up some sequences. So both scopes are set up and imaging and collecting data as you might be able to make out behind me um, but there's a slight change of plan so the red cat is still going after the jellyfish and monkey head nebula and that's coming in really nicely. I'll show you what the first sub looked like now. Um, so apart from the guiding which is slightly higher than I had expected um, it's actually looking quite nice so um, that's uh, that seemed to go to plan I'm sticking with that target but for the Ascar ATPHQ which is in the observatory I've actually decided to completely change target so I was planning to shoot the dark shark nebula but instead I've swung the telescope around completely the opposite direction um, so both scopes are now pointing south and I am shooting the comet so I'm sure you've seen lots of images of the comet recently um, but a good friend of mine Ollie Barrett actually called me up and said the comet is passing right through an ocean open cluster tonight so should make a really interesting image so completely last minute change of plan hopefully it um, it pays off but this is what the first sub of the uh, comet looked like so you can see here um, there's a nice open cluster with a comet just passing through so I'm shooting LRGB I'm doing three minutes luminance sub and then I'm just going 30 seconds RGB and I'm going to capture as much data as I can before the comet gets too low on the horizon so um, as you can see I've got two iPads set up monitoring them I know when you're using the ASIA you can use one iPad and switch between the two but I like to have two side by side so I can keep an eye on both scopes my guiding seems to be a bit dodgy tonight the numbers seem to be quite high but actually Actually, the stars look quite round so I'm not going to mess with it I don't mind those high numbers as long as the stars look nice um, so yeah anyway I'm going to let the the telescopes run and hopefully I can capture as much data as possible so unfortunately it's been one of those nights where the weather just has not played ball I managed to capture an hour's worth of luminance data on the comet um, and it was looking absolutely fantastic I was really pleased with it really getting quite excited about this image and then despite every single forecast saying it was going to be clear all night long the the clouds rolled in and um, yeah it just hasn't had I've had very very small breaks in the cloud where I've tried to grab some RGB subs but I've been shooting through cloud really so I don't think that they're going to be usable so I think this is the image that never was um, yeah, very disappointed because I can't just pick this up and take this image tomorrow night if it's clear or the next clear night because this is literally a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, that comet going in front of that open cluster is something that I will never see again. So yeah, very, very disappointed that um, I'm not gonna finish this image. Um, I did try and wait it out. It's now about quarter to one, but the, uh, the comet is just disappearing. Um, behind my my hedge and my neighbor's tree so yeah this um, this image is destined to go um, unfinished unfortunately I did manage to capture some data on the uh, monkey head and jellyfish I captured about an hour's worth of O3 data um, with the moonless sky so that's uh, that's quite nice um, but yeah I can pick that up anytime anytime I get a clear night sky and uh, finish that one off um, not the case with the comet but Anyway, I'm going to pack up now. Um, I will stack all of that data. I don't think the RGB subs are going to be usable, but if they are, I will obviously show you at the end of the video. If not, you'll probably get a nice luminance uh, image of the comet. Um, but yeah, I'm going to pack up now and then I'm going to go to bed and get some sleep. 
So apologies for being a little bit down and a little bit miserable in that last piece to camera. I was just disappointed thinking I was never going to finish this comet or get an image of that comet that I was hoping for. Well, it turns out that while I didn't manage to capture it all on one night, I did go back and get some data to pull together a final image. So on the first night, I got just over an hour's worth of luminance data on the comet going past the open cluster. So the comet looked really nice in that luminance data. It was going right past the open cluster. You could see the tail of the comet and I was really happy with that data. What I didn't have though was any RGB or any color to add to that image. So I decided on the following night where I had about an hour, an hour and a half window of clear skies to go back and try and get some RGB data to see if I could pull together a final image. So I got some RGB data on the comet. Now, obviously the comet was in a different location, um, but I did manage to get some RGB data for the comet. I also, got some RGB data on the star cluster. So I plate solved using the first night's image as a reference and I got some RGB data for the stars. So what I managed to do in post-processing was create an LRGB starless image for the comet, which I was really happy with. I also created an RGB image for the star cluster and then I added them together, I blended them together using that first night image as as a reference so to try and get it as close to as possible um, where the comet would actually be and I'm fairly happy with it I know some people out there some of the purists out there won't like this approach um, and it is technically cheating pulling that data together um, but I did get the luminance data of the comet going past the star cluster and then I just added in RGB from different nights. So I was just happy that I was able to pull together a final image. Over the next few nights, I also managed to finish off my jellyfish and monkey head nebula image with the Red Cat 51. I had a few issues with guiding. The, the weather wasn't great um, and the guiding wasn't too good either. Um, so the stars aren't perfect, but I'll put that image up at the end of the video but thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video if you have please do hit that like button and please consider subscribing if you haven't already i would really appreciate that um, but thanks again and i'll see you in the next video